Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today uh, we're going to talk about doing zenithal highlighting with pure metallic paint. So this is a question that's come up recently on a few video or on a few videos and some people asked me about it on social media. And it's something I'm a big fan of because it's a way to actually achieve a really amazing effect with your steel uh, very quickly and easily. So we've got a little storm cast here. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint this whole guy in, you know, about 15 minutes total is how much time I'll put into him. Uh, and, and I think we'll get a really great effect. I'm, the video might be slightly longer than that because I'm going to be explaining stuff. But let's talk about what we're going to use. So, first off, we're going to use some Vallejo metal color. The best Vallejo metal color. So, the best steel paint and acrylics on the market, period. All others are leagues behind. I know I've used every one of them <laughs> that exists. Uh, I have 18 different metal paints on my paint shelf. These are by far the best. They're immediately airbrushable and brushable. They blend, they cover, they do everything you want. So we're going to grab magnesium, dark aluminum, and silver, which as you can see have sort of a dark, mid, light color pattern to them. We're also going to use some black ink because we want to make sure we can build in our shadows. Now, the premise of zenithal highlighting should be immediately familiar to anybody who has watched anything on my channel, as you'll know that that's a core component of how I operate. For models that are mainly armor, like this Stormcast, right, um, something like zenithal highlight or something like uh, zenithal highlighting can really be a great way to go. But if you're not doing him in a color, if you're going to do him in all metal, the problem is metal paint is very naturally opaque. Now, I still zenithal this guy to start with for two reasons. One, to sort of chart out my highlights and make sure I have a good image on him. And two, because I then put some silly putty. That's what all this, like, weird, I don't know, flesh-colored, orange-colored stuff is. It's just good old red egg silly putty right over the top. You can get it for, like, I don't know. I think that was four bucks on Amazon. I bought it a while back. But it won't pull your paint up. Easy peasy. Shoot over top of it. Peel it off. You're good to go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do his armor and his face and stuff like that. And we're going to do that all in a very quick, easy zenithal scheme. So we're going to start with our darkest metal, which is magnesium. And I've put a couple drops of thinner uh, into my airbrush. And I'm just going to then go ahead and drop a few drops of magnesium in. Say like two drops of thinner, uh, one, uh, two drops of thinner, three drops of magnesium. Uh, we're using a little Grex XG2 here. It's got a two millimeter needle, so it's got a very sharp fine line to it and this first one now notice i didn't cover every single piece of cloth and that's okay it doesn't really matter but we're gonna go ahead and just get a nice good coat on him here fast easy quick uh the vallejo uh metal color airbrush is like a dream shoots right out very smooth very rarely do i have any problems with clogging at least you know, no more often than you do with any sort of paint, I suppose, in an airbrush, as it's always somewhat of a challenge, of course. Uh, we're going to do this guy in steel. It's a little, so we'll go for a little bit of a hollowed knights kind of thing. Uh, although, obviously, you could do this with golds as well. Um, and you could, you know, this is also great for things like space marines. Boy, if you've got an iron warrior's army you want to knock out in, you know, a day, uh, you can get it looking pretty good pretty fast. So, there you go. He's steel now. You can see he's all shiny and reflective. And I mean, just that alone, look at how nice and sharp that steel color is. Smooth like butter. No visible pigment, no none of that. Okay. So now to turn on my fan for just a second. I don't, I'd rather not inhale a bunch of uh, fumes of airbrush paint with metal flakes in it. Okay. And then I'm just going to put some water through real quick just to make sure we get the worst out. I don't want anything drying or getting chunky on me, but that's all I'm going to do. Not full on cleaning it. Because we're going to move through these metals real fast. Now, next up, another two drops of thinner. Very quick. 
Now we're going to go for dark aluminum, our mid-tone color. Again, two drops thinner, one drop, or sorry, two drops thinner, three drops dark aluminum. We backfill it a little. Okay. And now we're going to do our standard zenithal attack. So, put the shield to the side there. Standard zenithal attack, we're going to go at sort of a high angle. And there we go. Quick, easy, simple. Okay? Just that fast. And you'll notice at a low angle, we still have lots of darks. But we're going to reinforce that, don't worry. Because remember that black ink. Okay. Once again, uh, this time I'm going to clean my, my airbrush out. Actually, like, legitimately clean it real quick. So we put in some cleaner. We do a quick backfill. Blow out that cleaner. The goal here is now we need to reinforce our shadows back in. Now, is this going to be, you know, the best paint job? No. No, no. But it will look really good, or at the very least, it's a great base to start from that you can go in and clean up very easy. Now, this is, I'm doing this individually, but as you can see, that was like two quick sprays of paint. Realistically, I could line up 10 or 20 of these guys and be doing them in just a matter of minutes, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take my black ink, just straight black ink. I'm going to put like, again, another, maybe a drop thinner, maybe two, and then about three drops of ink. Kind of a two to three ratio is the magic number here, for me at least. Get that all mixed up. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with the black ink is we're going to actually go and sort of inversely zenithal this. And we're going to be real careful about it. We're going to shoot at a low angle. And we're going to try to catch just the bottoms of things. Right? So the goal is we're just shooting up. Hitting those upper ridges, trying to get under the everything. Now, this black ink is going to build up real slow, and we can get real targeted with it. And if you get a little too much in there, that's okay, because our next step is going to be the actual highlight. But we're going to focus it under the legs, you know, under these spaces where there would be shadows. We just quickly get in here and lay this down. Okay, so you can see now I've really reinforced those darks from underneath. But, up, but when I look at him from up above... Still very shiny. So what I get now is a real nice effect of the transition of this guy. Okay? And if you want to really push some of it around, we can get in there and, like, really, really build some of these shadows. The ink will look much stronger when you initially put it on than it does when it dries. That's one of the reasons I really love this Vallejo ink for this purpose. Because it ends up, it looks quite black, it's easy to see where you put it. But then when it dries, it actually just looks like a sort of faded out metal. Now another option here, by the way, if you don't want to do what I'm doing with this sort of reverse zenithal, uh, a, a black oil wash can also be a lot of fun here on this steel. It takes a little longer to dry, obviously it's going to get in the middle. You do the whole steps and then you do the oil wash. But it's also certainly a possibility. What I don't love as much is an all over wash with something like a Nuln oil. Because that's going to dry and just ruin your steel. Like, that is the that is the instant road to just ruining your steel. If you're Because it just knocks the shine out of everything. If you are going to use a standard or traditional GW shade on this, then do it in a careful, controlled way like I did. Like, just push the shade up into these ridges. Don't just wash the whole model. And the problem is that then adds time. But it's, it's the quickest road to just ruining the shade or the, the shine on your model. 
because it'll just coffee stain out and it won't really look nice. Okay, so now we're going to drop some thinner in and now we go to our silver, which is our brightest, brightest color. Once again, we'll go about two to three. It's more silver than we need, but that's okay. Okay. So now what we're going to do is in a very targeted fashion, we're going to get in here and we're going to hit some areas. So I'm going to get the edge of this hammer here. Tip of the toe. I want to come in and get like the top of the chest here. Right, so it's nice and shiny. I want to get the edge of these fingers. Very fine control. I am just barely rocking the brush back. Like, that's the goal. You want to just barely touch that brush. Or that, that trigger. And I just work my way around at a high angle. Hit those knees. Get them real shiny. All right, you can see that nice shiny knee now. Get all those areas nice and shined up. And there you go. We've zenithled with the silver. Okay? So now, all I do, I'll show you the rest of the work. We'll go back to the actual painting desk, and I'll show you how I finish this guy out and get him done super fast and ready for the table. So we'll be back in just a moment. All right, and we're back. Back at the painting desk, and uh, we are ready to finish up our finish up our stormcast. So, like I said, this trick you can really use it on you know any sort of model. But you'll see how we've got this wonderful sort of shade and these reflections on the metal. Now, the airbrush is never going to be perfect when it comes to small detail. You know, there's always going to be little corrections you have to make. For example, if you look there inside his helmet, he doesn't have like a clear defined line in between all the various components. So the first step, just very quickly, you know, what I would do is I'd grab some of that same black ink and get it on my palette. I grab a fairly sharp brush, one that I know I can get good results from. I take that black ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick out any detail with it with the ink that I know I need to reshade. So in between his face and the helmet, around his mouth, under his chin. Um, if I want to reinforce anything quickly, I can. Maybe here under that, his, this sort of coif for the edge of his armor. You know, if we've got like panel lines that maybe got blown away, although these came out pretty well. But I could reinforce the panel lines. Or I could reinforce in between his feet. That could be a good one. You know, you want those to look nice and strong. Just quick little touches like this. Again, totally optional. This is the stuff that I tend to tend to focus on because it's these little things that can take a very quick paint job. They only take like a minute or two to do. But they can really then make it look like you spent a lot more time on it. So we just very quickly grab those edges. Fill those panels. Okay. Maybe we want to get that one a little stronger. In between there. Fingers. There we go. Okay. So just some quick stuff like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. That's not the goal. This is about getting a quick, good-looking, you know, sort of hallowed knight or iron warrior. Basically a steel-focused thing on the table. Somewhere where you've got, uh, where you're mostly using metals. Okay, cool. So there we go. We got a little reinforcement in there. Now, I have told you I originally zenithled, and you notice I've taken the silly putty off, and that's the goal. Because, or that was the reason for that, because now... I can just go ahead and grab some 
very th we'll grab some thinned blue in this case some uh holdra blue from scale 75 which is a wonderful color for glazing with let's give a little test there it looks nice and we're just going to go over the shoulder pad We get a little messy, no big deal. You just wipe that away. Nice and quick and easy. In fact, I think I want a different brush for this. I don't like that brush for that, so we're going to use a different brush. Right tool for the right job. Oops, sorry. Okay. So now, in this case, there's a little, like, hammer on this shoulder. I'm just going to cover it completely for this because I don't care. I'll come back and pick it out in just a moment. Turn the shoulder pads blue. Let's see, what else should be blue? Probably the edge of this, probably his tabard here. So we just kind of push a thin layer of the paint on there, and you'll notice we get some nice shading because we're just following the previous zenithal. Anything else that should be blue on this guy? His shield, but I don't have the shield ready to go. So, oh, yeah, we can do the little his little leg tabards or whatever his little groin tabard as well. That could be blue. I'm not following any official color scheme here; just my own personal taste on how I like these guys. I think the actual Hallowed Knights have some gold in there, which we could certainly add, but whatever. Okay. Now that we've gone around, we're going to do another quick glaze. Basically just two thin glazes to make sure we've got a nice coverage on it. So the color has some volume to it. All right, and there's that. So now you can see that's got a nice blue. If you wanna, if you wanna build it up a little while it's still wet, we could grab just a quick little wet black. I've got just some regular old War Colors black on my palette, and I can just sweep right around the edge while that is still wet, and just give that a quick instant wet blend. If you've got a little of the steel up into the silver, this can also help just completely cover that up. And there you go. Now we have that wonderful shadowed shoulder pad. Just that easy. Then we're going to go up here in these little... I don't know what these are called. These little tabard flags? I don't really know. We'll push some black up into them. So they've got a nice shadow. And then we'll come in here and we'll run a little shadow up into there. And there you go. Just kind of reinforcing. You can see how great. Look at the, you can see the variance on that now. Just with that one quick run around of a wet black glaze when I still had the blue slightly wet so I could work it together. All right, so then we grab, let's say, some brown, a little red brown. And uh, let's go ahead and get the belt. And we'll get his handles. I've never been a fan of the colored sort of hilt things that they sometimes do on Stormcast. I like good old-fashioned leather. And obviously we're just using a brown with some decent coverage. We'll get the uh, sword. I don't know what you call this. Sheath. There you go. That's what you call it. I do know what it's called. Jeez. So we kind of turn that brown there. Let me 
just a little spot in there. There we go. All right, so we've got that those that hilt done and little hilt. I guess I need to get the blue around the edge of the tabard at the bottom. So for that, I want to not, since there's actually metal paint on that, I'm going to grab my full strength blue. But the best part here is because it's so, uh, it's so small, I don't really need to worry too much about the highlight. But I'm just going to trace it around real quick. Scale 75 paints are also pretty great for this because they are so matte. So when they go over the top of anything that's metal, they immediately just knock the shine right out of it, which is pretty great. I want to push that even a little more. What can I say? I can't help myself. And there we go. Just like that, we've got a little hallowed night. Now, are you going to win some painting competitions? Nah, probably not. What could I do next? Well, I could grab a little, let's say, you know, copper or gold or something. I could get that out on my palette. I could pick out the details here that I want picked out. Uh, so, for example, I can grab that. And let's go ahead and pick out the... Uh, Again, we'll grab some Vallejo Metal Color. We can grab this hammer real quick. Just some little details to make them pop out. I can get the buckles. Oops. Right, anything like that. Just little details. You can go around and clean those up or whatever. This is this is where you make the decision about how far you want to take your individual models. Because if you're just looking to achieve a quick tabletop standard, maybe that's good enough. You know, maybe you just kind of stop there. Maybe we get this lightning bolt on the shoulder and then you say, you know what? I like it. I'm happy with it. It's going to look, you know, I've got my colors to get going on the tabletop. I've got a nice looking steel. And that's good enough. And that's just fine. Whatever the goal is you're trying to achieve, you can go from there. Okay? So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial on uh, sort of zenitholing with metal paints. I'll include a little photo of this guy at the end. Like I said, it's a pretty quick process. Even with me explaining it, it uh, didn't take too long. But you can really... With just a little quick ap application of things like the Vallejo Metal Color and some black ink, you can get a really, really nice steel effect that's going to look real smooth. Like, you know, let's get right in there. You know, you look at how smooth that steel looks. There's plenty of options where you can go up from here, but this gives you something fully functional for the tabletop. So if you need to get a bunch of these guys painted quickly for a tournament that's coming up or something, hey... You're good to go. And the best part is you can always come back later and touch them up more and take them higher and do some more steps. But for now, we'll call this one complete. Like I said, I'll throw a little photo at the end. Give it a like if you like it. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with somebody if they're looking for a quick way to get a lot of uh, sort of maybe steel warriors on the table quickly. Uh, the sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and deeply appreciated. But as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.